Today we're making homemade pasta with egg, a delicious and simple recipe that you will love. everyone has in their pantry. We're going to use a simple technique and a recipe for a, that makes a very silky and smooth dough. So the basic ingredients are two cups of flour and in this bowl I have two whole eggs and six yolks. The egg content and the fat content is what's going to make the dough nice and silky. So I've got a well here with my two cups of flour. You just kind of round that out. And I'm going to put my eggs right in there. All of them at the same time? All at the same time. When you showed this to me for the first time, I couldn't believe how many eggs, but it really did change the flavor of it for the better versus someone who just uses like flour and water or something. You can use the flour and water, I've done that too. Um, it, it makes a great dough, but I've had better success with, with egg. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, it makes just a, a silkier dough and I think it's easier to work with. And plus, hey, they're protein and egg, right? Ah, always a good thing. Always <laughs> a good thing. So then just, healthy pinch of salt we'll put in there yep and this is a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil now you don't want like a vegetable oil or something like that or I mean you could do it but if you're making but every pasta, Italian right would be mad at use, me if I did you need to use extra virgin olive oil you're Italian American you won't let me use something else <laughs> exactly you know, you can um, play around with the recipe and and extract or add different things. I mean, that's the fun of it. But this is just foolproof, so it works and it works works really well. And so the salt should be um, sea salt or kosher salt. So now, oh, here's the magic. Here's the magic. So just going to twirl this around, get it incorporated, just get the flour in there. If you have a, a little breach, don't worry about it. It's very just, soothing. So you do prefer the this well method out on a board versus in a bowl or something. See, I have a breach, but that's oh. okay. I'm gonna contain it by getting more flour in there. Just keep moving it yeah, around. Yeah, just keep moving it around. I can see it slowing down already. Yeah. Uh, the viscosity is changing. Yeah. yeah. That's a happy accident because that's very educational. I wouldn't have known what to do. I would have thought I mean, the whole thing would have been. You know, I've I've done this plenty of times, no breach at all. But today we have a breach, and it's going to happen. And don't panic when it does. So you're just bringing flour back over near the breach and then pushing it into it. Yep. So that it absorbs all it that, absorbs. Um, yep. the liquid from the egg. Sweet, okay. I'm just gonna stir it around and then when we're gonna get to the point soon enough where it is going to be firm enough. Oh, it's really not moving yep. much anymore. So it's not yep. gliding all over the board at this point. Now you could do this in a um, food processor, mixer, mm -hmm. but I, I just think that this is just as easy. It's very meditative looking and Deneen did show me one time before how to do this uh, and it was so easy and just so uh, intuitive that uh, why wouldn't you do it this way? It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a tradition. It's, like it's, it's, it's the whole experience. It's a legacy in fact. Yeah. yeah. And definitely it's old school. You know, I, I, I love old school cooking. I think also with uh, the pandemic for the last month uh, <laughs> that we've had, 
Yes. Uh, people have come back to that sort of basic thinking mm-hmm. of like, I'm going to bake my bread. I'm going to do a sourdough starter or what have you. Um, make my own pasta dough for the first time. And so exactly. um, if you are thinking of doing that during the pandemic, this would be a perfect starter because I feel like it's a very simple recipe. I mean, it we just really have flour, is. eggs, and salt. It really is. Okay. Now, I think it's coming together enough. So I'm going to put the fork down here and flour my hands up a bit so it doesn't stick too much. Now, you see that didn't take very long at all. And then you just move things around with the fork. That's all you did. That's it. Now, believe me, I can see your talent, but at the same time, it, it looks really quite simple. It really is. And then once we get this dough to form, um, we're going to spend 10 minutes kneading it. Now, so are we so beginning the kneading process now? Now is oh, the, official, okay. the official kneading. So we know that it's incorporated. All right, and just with the palms, bring it out and back. There's all different kinds of way to knead, but the basic way will do. And then we want to do this for a good 10 minutes because this is the most important part. Okay. Then uh, by the magic of TV video editing, uh, we'll see the 10 minutes transform right here before our eyes. stuff flour all that fancy stuff for this recipe we're going with the all-purpose because it's the easiest to find and you can get the double zero flour I honestly never worked with that I have worked with semolina which um, makes more of a grainy dough oh, and a grittier, quality it, a grittier and more of an al dente kind of taste this is our uh, silky and smooth dough I remember so, last time. Yes. It was so amazing. So this is the final um, dough after kneading for approximately 10 minutes. You can see how nice and smooth. It looks great. And so what we need to do at this point is we need to wrap it and just let it rest for 30 minutes. So I have some plastic wrap over here. We'll get that wrapped up. Now, you could also make your dough ahead of time, wrap it like this, put it in the fridge up to a couple days or so. Just make sure you take it out uh, an hour to two hours, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. I've done this a few times and usually I find like within an hour and 15, hour, 30 minutes, it it's you would never know that you made it and put it in the fridge it works just as well so if um, you didn't let it rest what would happen it, is it like a, a stretchy issue it would kind of yeah come back it, into... it, just like with any dough it just it, the glutens need time to relax so i've never actually tried to work with it without a rest <laughs> well, I mean, it just shrinks back into itself if yes. it's not rested and the gluten isn't developed. So, yeah, it makes sense to me. So, we would definitely want to put it aside for that 30 minutes. And like I said, you can make it a couple days ahead of time. And that, friends, finishes off today's video. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon next to it so that you're notified every time we upload a video. We post new cooking episodes every week. See you next time.
all you, um, <laughs> yeah, 